What is going on everybody man? King Recon here. Now I received a comment on that open suggestion box video from a good friend of mine right here. And this comment right here inspired me and I said, you know what? I do miss doing a review-esque thoughts type of video. And I would definitely love to do this, especially for chapters like these that I, that I can't stop thinking about, you know. Even after, you know, hours later after reading this chapter, it's one of those chapters where you just can't stop thinking about, man. You want to come back, you want to talk about it. Hell, I even went back, made some references, man in volume 66 and 76 to go back and, and discuss once we get to the, to the last page of, of the chapter again. But, you know, I, I want to do this more often, man. Whenever I asked you guys uh, in that one random stream that I did in my car, uh, if you wanted to see some afterthoughts uh, d discussions like that after after live reactions, then you said, yeah, that you would like to see that. Uh, so I was like, all right, awesome sauce, because now I can not only do the reaction, but now we can also do some afterthoughts and sometimes the afterthoughts could be streams, you know, just whatever, whatever the week has in store for us. But I really, really wanted to talk about this chapter, chapter 906. Um, so let's definitely get into that. But before I do, I just want to let you all know, just in case, because this video is coming out after the live reaction. I want to let y'all know if you were looking forward to the live reaction, this is not a replacement for the live reaction. Um, if, if you were looking forward to the reaction itself, the reaction is up. It is on the channel. Uh, it's If I don't leave a link to, the, to it in the description box below, just click on the channel, hit videos, and it should be the second one under this one. You know, Wolfie Shepard 906 a live reaction. So if you were looking forward to the reaction, that one is there. This is not a replacement for the reaction. This is just um, a discussion taking place after the reaction, talking about, you know, the thoughts and, you know, letting everybody after everything has processed and letting er er everything has sunk in sort of because you can't really have something sink in with a chapter like this but let's go ahead and dive right into it and talk about the awesome sauce of of this one piece chapter oh but, but actually no hold on one more one more thing I do want to bring back the recon piece with the live recon piece, but I think I'm gonna save that for episode 20 of the recon piece because I want to, this summer, man, I wanna, I, I really wanna bring back the recon piece. So, I think my next recon piece, I'm gonna do a special episode for, um, for for a certain thing, uh, and I want to do that for episode 19. So I think I'm gonna do that for episode 19 and episode 20. I'll end up doing the live recon piece with like the top five uh, chapters. Uh, well, actually, let me ask y'all. Let me ask y'all this. Let me ask y'all this. Would y'all prefer if I did the live recon piece? Uh, let's just say if, if I, if whenever I do this live recon piece, uh, whenever the case, so let's just say One Piece goes on break the week after next week. And I do a live recon piece the week after. Uh, I do the top five uh, or the, um, the the results for the top five chapters of 2017 that, that, that you guys all voted for, which I still have the results for. Uh, would you like me to make a new poll before then talking about uh, asking what, what your top 10 favorite chapters in the whole arc are? Like, would you guys like to have a poll like that, top 10 chapters in all Hokkaik Island? Then we have both of those back to back, and then I start off the stream with those two, and then we get into a general discussion about about One Piece and about the Reverie and where everything's going on right now. Uh, would y'all like to have something like that be done? Because I can definitely do something like that, man. And that way, because the thing, the reason was the reason why I was kind of like let every, letting everything you know go back a little bit when it came to the live recon piece is that I wanted to um, create my own list. And really have like the, the set list, like set in stone. But it, it's been getting very, very difficult. So I would rather like read off your guys' list and talk about the greatness of of, of of like those top ten chapters that, that you choose. Hell, if we end up doing a top ten Hulk Island chapters, I might actually have to you know step in myself and and make my own top ten after we read the arc and whatnot. But you know, just let me know if if you if you would be interested in, in something like that for the live recon piece because I do want to make the first live recon piece special uh, because it's been built up for about six months now and I. I apologize about that man but if, if if something like that interests you just let me know down below in the comment section but now now we are back i'm finally back in my house man dragon kaido and shanks are having a war outside and it caused me to come back home earlier than scheduled so here i am for one piece after 906 afterthoughts let's talk into the awesome sauce man you know i need something like this man i really do you know just to, for me to relax you know one piece is whenever i come on here and talk about it it's it's my relaxation time man. it's my time to, to, to just you know get all of the rest of the world out of here and i'm in my own time this is my this is my space right here man this is my happy space you know what i'm saying so let's get to talk about the awesome sauce right here 
So let, I'm going to go through page by page and just, you know, discuss it uh, from then on. Kind of like a, a rereading of, of the chapter of sorts. And then, uh, of course, I really want to get to uh, the last two pages. But just starting off right here with the with the first page, um, I, like, like I was stating in, in the reaction, I absolutely love the art. Uh, right here, man, you know, Oda's, Oda's assistants have been on point when it comes to the backgrounds. And I mean, they really, really have uh, in these past couple of chapters. But in this art, in this chapter in particular, with with with, with the Mari Joyce, the Mari Joyce, they they really, really were on the area game, man. Just having the gondola arrive at the port and you see this gorgeous, I mean, absolutely gorgeous background. You know, Oda and his assistants have been they've been killing it, man. And right here, you know, we're seeing Shirahoshi get up there, get, having her. I love how Sh uh, Shirahoshi, um, especially right now, because, you know, going back to Fishman Island, I know there's a lot of people that, that didn't like the way that, that her character was, you know, always crying and whatnot. And um, and I love how now, because of all of that that that, uh, that she did in Fishman Island, now, like, for me, the, she's now truly serving the purpose of her character, if that makes sense, at least at this point in time, because, of course, we know the purpose that she has to... Uh, that she has later on the line as Poseidon and whatnot, but for at this current point in time, as being like the 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 person who who reacts and we get those cute moments out of whenever you know she reacts to certain um, things that we take for granted, like just seeing the sun, seeing trees, seeing everything out there, and just you know taking it all in. It makes you appreciate everything that you have, um, and I love how Oda puts Shirohoshi in in that situation because it creates a lot of cute moments and it creates uh it, it, it makes me love shirohoshi's character and and makes me want to see her more so i can see more of those uh, cute little reactions so then we go right here down the page and we get to see another gorgeous and i compared this to like ancient rome man i mean it, it really really does remind me of like going up the stairs man the ides of march shout out to the ides of march man and you're just going up there you go and 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 you, and you meet up with, with Caesar himself, you know, and and it really is a gorgeous panel, man. I'll, I'll reread the, the the text right here. All passengers must trek to the top of these long, broad stairs in order to arrive at the high, at the highest and most colossal expanse of land, located in the center of the seas. This is the place where the descendants the descendants of this world's creators reside, and the name of this majestic land is the Holy Land, Mari Joyce. Now, when it comes to uh, at the past couple of chapters. We've been noticing that Oda's been changing uh, certain names, uh, like Kobe. Originally, I had it with a C, and now it, uh, he drew it with with a K. And now with the with the Mary Joyce, it, we're getting an official thing of it being the Mary, and then G E O I S E. Um, you know, it it is what it is. Whatever o Oda wants to have it be, what it's gonna be, what it is. I mean, it sounds similar anyway. You know, just differently from saying Mary Joa and Mary Joyce. That's it. You know, usually you have the Mari Joa with Mari and then jo, J O I S, which is which which would be like kind of like the similar type of way of you saying it with the Mari Joyce. And this this panel right here is gorgeous, man. I mean, just seeing the main building and then you get to see the lead in into that, you know, the, the, the artificially planted lands all around them. Then more of like the of, of where like the regular civilians that are here live over there and and it's 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 a great it's it's a it's a great panel it's one of those uh you know um one piece panels where you get to see the way that like the whole island or in this case like the whole uh marijoa lo looks lo looks like and it's it's gorgeous it is it is a gorgeous panel man and then we go down right here oh and this this part right here on the bottom of of we're on, we're on page five now uh, this part right here on on okay so first let me, let me go ahead and talk about the fukuboshi and the thing with steli i think that steli that we're really going to be leading into uh, like a massive thing with because steli's been he's been dogging on the fi on, on on the fishman you know from the very from the immediate reintroduction of, of steli it felt like oda's been preparing us for something between him and the fishman so regardless of whether something happens again with the fishermen, because that, that's what happened last time with Charlos. Excuse me. Charlos, of course, you know, took out Hachi. And, and that's when Luffy said, I'm, I'm not taking this no more. Punched the living flagnards out of him. One of the most iconic moments in the series. But here, we've been having Steli nonstop. You know, and, and we've even had, uh, we even have a panel right here of Fukuboshi saying, I've got a bad feeling about this. So regardless of who it is that's laying the smackdown on Steli, man, Steli, Steli's getting pwned. Steli's getting pwned by the end of this, man. Either he's getting punched, or there's going to be one of those beast moments, like the one that we had back in, um, 
in Jaya, whenever Luffy and Zoro refused to fight Bellamy because they just felt like it, they, they weren't even worth their time because they Luffy knew he would one-shot Bellamy if they ever got into a fight, man. Like, that, that's just, it, he had a Shanks moment, man. He's like, you know what? I, I don't, who cares? You know, we're having fun out here, man. He's like, you, you know, take a dump on me all you want, man, as long as you don't touch my comrades. That's it, yo. But, you know, if Fishman, I, if, if, if they have a moment like that, I'd, I'd be cool with it, too. But... In terms of, like, w where this is leading to, obviously it's leading to something with Fukuboshi saying, I've got a bad feeling about this, so I'm looking forward to seeing what that's going to be. Now, heading into the Tribulators. This right here was another moment that I really, really um, like that Oda put into the chapter with the slaves being the ones that are making this thing move, just indicating just how much of a, like, these Celestial Dragon bastards, man, having everything move, like, they, no matter where they are, they're, they, they leave behind these sick imprints of, of how sick they are as, as human beings, as individuals. Like, even for something like this, they have slaves for, bro. Like, it's ridiculous. They're so lazy. And and th that that they're, they're even doing this in their own homeland. Even in their own homeland. Like, in sub Audi at the very least. And I hated it. Over the fact that, that they had, that they were, like, using these guys as, as you know, their own, like, flipping like like whenever back in the day you would have like people riding on elephants and horses they were using humans as as this type of as as that right and then now they're so lazy and they're so ridiculous they're so repugnant that's what that's the one thing i love about the celestial dragons is that i realize that oda makes me want to hate them but i can't i can't help but but do so i can't help but despise these guys man those are bastards. And then we have, of course, like I was saying before, this panel of the person on the left saying, someone please save me, and if that's not possible, then kill me instead, man. I know, but what a powerful thing. Like, if you can't save me, then just kill me. I'm, t I'm tired of being down here, man. I'm tired of this garbage, man. But based on what we saw in 904, the revolutionaries live. They are here for this, for, for, for something like this. They are here to liberate people like this, man. Really can't wait to see that happen. So here we have, and then we see Charlos, man, right here. We're on page six, guys. And seeing Charlos again, man, I mean, like I said, like I, like I was saying in the reaction, this is the one dude that I really want to see get punched in the face, man. I, I, again. Again, bro. I got multiple times. They have it be a punching booth. You know how they have kissing booths? When having it be a punching booth, man, like everyone gets a turn. Da. Da. I mean, just deck them. Somebody hit them with a Dempsey roll, bro. Something, man. Something. An extra large one. I'm talking about Shirahoshi, like she's a flipping uh, Big Mac. It's like, come on, coach. And he's not the only one. Like, later on in the chapter, there, there were multiple individuals that were fiending over Shirohoshi. I'm like, man, chill. And then Fukuboshi, and, and, and they, they were over here trying to defend. I say, yeah, man, we don't want to cause any stuff. Screw that, you know? They're fiending over your sister, man. You better show some pride, some respect. It's like, I understand that you want to protect Fishman Island. That you're there as the king's Fishman Island, and Fishman Island will, will get put. Damn it, man, you're under the territory of the king. What are they going to do? What are they going to do whenever the fifth emperor rolls up, man? Luffy don't care. Some celestial dragon, some kings show up, man. Zoro, wait, 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 listen, man. You you send Usopp down there, bro. It's just, da, 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 those kings, the celestial, they, they're getting pwned. Scared? Get him out of here, coach. Get him out of here. But anyways, <laughs> anyways, man, we'll, we'll get to that whenever we get to that. So here we arrive at the panel upon page six, which I do want to spend some time talking about. First of all, it is a gorgeous panel. Really love how the world government symbol is right there. You have the skate coming up, really beautiful castle right here. But I want to talk about the name of the castle. It is the Pangea Castle. The Pangea, of course, being the supercontinent that existed over 335 million years ago. Now, with it being called the, the, the af, it, it, with it being named after Pangea, and us knowing about what happened or what could have happened with the world 800 years ago. Could Oda possibly be hinting at something with with that, with being called the Pangea Castle up in the Holy Land? Who knows? It's Oda. You know what I'm saying? Especially with the end of the chapter, who knows what he truly has in store. But it is definitely named after the supercontinent uh, from back over 335 million years ago before it started breaking apart over 175 million years ago. Um, so... We'll see what happens there. Of course, we know how we, our where, where, where we are currently on the planet. There's seven continents, and there's a lot of sevens, man. There's a lot of sevens. <laughs> well, we'll get to that soon, yo. There's a lot of sevens here in One Piece now, or not in One Piece, but in in, in uh, just in general. There's there's a lot of sevens. So let's get right into the next page here, and then we have you know all of them together. 
uh, we have a lot of the kings actually seeing their faces for the first time. Right over here, you have one. Um, this this dude right here looks just, just looks like a troll right here on the bottom. Uh, this this dude right here. This guy right here, he just, he just looks like a troll to me, man. So, And then the one in the middle right here, they also look like trolls too. <laughs> they look pretty funny. The one on the left, like, he's going to be very, very devious. Uh, but overall, you know, just getting interaction between the kings was, was pretty dope. And right here we have everybody, you know, fiending again over Shirahoshi. And Shirahoshi is saying, none of you are my type, as she should. As she should, man. And 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 shame, shame on the brothers. Shame on the brothers for attempting to 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 defend such a thing, man. It's like, do you know whose territory you're part of now, man? Believe in the king, bro. Let her, let her say what she wants, man. It's like it's facts. And then she says she's no good at lying. Of course, of course, man. Really, really awesome moment right there. Another moment, you know, solidifying uh, how much I've, I'm really, really liking Ashiroshi's character in this arc. And then we get to see Vivi, man, and. Y'all know me, man. I mean, there's a reason why I have the volume 23 from Alabasta up here, yo. It just brings brings good vibes. Always brings good vibes, man. It's always good to see Vivi around because Vivi, to me, is like a straw hat that's not a part of the actual crew. And she's just, you know, we were with her for so long, man. And every time that I see her, it's like seeing a straw hat again. And uh, and it's really awesome just seeing her around. And seeing her interactions with Rebecca was, was really, really cool uh, in this chapter. And seeing Karu again, and it was it was dope, man. Uh, of course, you know, seeing Leo and whatnot, and Sai. Whenever we, whenever we do see Sai, that was that was really cool. But yes, just seeing the interactions between uh, freaking Rebecca and Vivi and Shirahoshi, and once again, you know, and, and of course, you know, we we can joke around saying, you know, that that the uh, like the Luffy fan club and whatnot. But it, it is it is really cool seeing the 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 extent of you know this journey has ta been taking place over twenty one years now, uh, heading into the twenty first anniversary of the series. And whenever we see moments like this with the princesses getting together and talking about the impact and being fa legitimate fans of what Luffy has done to them because of the impact that the Straw Hats have had on their on their lives, helping them to push forward and, and persevere and, and get whatever needs to be whatever needs to get done done, you know, especially in dire situations, for those characters to be the ones that that did that, it just makes you look back and not only does it make the world feel more alive, and that's the one thing I really like, or one of the things I really like about this chapter, is that not only does that particular piece of dialogue make, make the world feel alive, but so does the final page of the chapter, where um it the final page of the chapter makes the world feel alive and in, into which you you really realize that out of all the mysteries that we've, we've been wondering about for so many years. We're only just scratching the surface of all the mysteries in the of all the actual secrets within the One Piece world. And that makes the world feel that much more bigger and that much more alive. And then we have moments like these uh, that also make the world feel alive. What the character is talking about, you know, our main cast and and you know and and the kind of impact that they had, you know, making those journeys worthwhile and them coming back here in, in this current situation. So, uh, the, I I really found that to be a really awesome moment. And of course, you know, with the trivia with and I like these these little trivia things because you know there definitely are going to be those those individuals that are going to be reading this that I uh, that are just starting off here. And the reason why I say that is because some there, there's a lot of people out there. Uh, especially whenever we get to the to, to the anime side of things, there's a lot of people out there that they just you know they're not worried about going back from chapter one or episode one and going out through that the entire series. Though I would love for everybody to start from chapter one and episode one of a, of a particular special, especially for One Piece. And I would love for everybody to start from chapter one and go all the way up until where we are right now, uh, but it, that's that's not a realistic expectation. Knowing the way that, that people are, that's why a lot of people love series. Um, a lot of people loved the big three in Dragon Ball, was because it was so easy to get into. You know, you could just catch a random episode on television, and because the recaps are so long, that's the reason why Toei is is excellent and always and, and always does such a good job at doing those recaps. Like even though we may complain as viewers about recaps and episodes starting around five minutes in, those recaps help, man. And I was telling my my me and my brother had this long discussion about um. Uh, about this during dra for Dragon Ball, where Goku and we're re rewatching Goku and Freeze in Japanese, and the episode started off with these epic and amazing recaps for what happened in the last episode of Dragon Ball, and I told and I told my brother I was like, look, man, so because we had a discussion about it uh, a couple months before, but then whenever we were rewatching that that particular arc, I told him I, I said this is why they do recaps because can you imagine, you know, getting home one day 
you flick on the TV and you see Goku vs. Frieza happening, the recap is telling you what happened up until the, this point and why you should care about what's happening on television, and thus a new fan is born. Just like that, you know, I mean, that happened with me in Dragon Ball. You know, back on Cartoon Network back in the day, I, I caught, caught a random episode of it back in the Namek Saga. And I'm, and I'm a fan here to this very day of, of Dragon Ball, you know. Luckily, I was able to catch One Piece from episode one, or, or I, well, the first episode I saw was, was from the muggy stuff, but then I went back to to the beginning and, and, and went through it from there because that's just the way that I like watching and reading my series is from the beginning. But there's a lot of people out there who like reading and watching stuff from wherever it is on television until where, wherever it ends up. You know, that they, they go back and they look at some lore, look at some history uh, that, that takes place like back then and then they just set off and, and read or watch it from then. It's a sad truth, but it is a truth. There's a lot of people out there who will... There's probably some people out there who started here from the Reverie arc. They were like, Whole Cake Island in it? Okay, cool. Let me start off here from Reverie. You know, they, they see Vivi again. Maybe they were a fan of One Piece back in, like, 2002. And they said, oh, Vivi's on the cover? Let me go check out One Piece again. It's been over 15 years. And and here here they are, re, re, reading One Piece again. And maybe they're catching up slowly but surely, but they're keeping up with the weekly One Piece experience. The reason why Oda and his editors have this is for people like that. The casual viewers who are not like us and are not constantly reading the series and, uh, you know, I went back and actually... You don't even have to be a hardcore fan. Just like a person who went through the series once. There's a lot of people that haven't even went through the whole series once, you know? So this is for the casual viewer who is, or the casual reader who is just reading along for the for the first time. You know, like for example, uh, there's another quick example. Going into the Shonen Jump volumes, uh, there was a lot of series that I got into thanks to the Shonen Jump volumes, randomly having a random chapter into it. In it, uh, there was um, freaking Bakuman was one of those for me. Uh, Bakuman was one of those. Uh, flipping um, Siren. That's how I got into Siren. I got into Siren because a random chapter was in a week, was in an issue of Shonen Jump, and I was like, yo, this is pretty dope. Went back and I, I read it from the beginning. Um, let me see another, uh, another example of this. Um, there was this one, uh, Hikaru no Go! That's another perfect example of it. Even though I never caught up to Hikaru no Go, but that was another really interesting read that I would just read every single time a new, new issue came out. So, that, that, that's why they do these trivia things. And I just wanted to get that across because I do, I have been seeing some complaints over the whole trivia thing, even though it only takes up a couple of panels, but... That, that's the main reason why they do these trivia things and these recaps in the anime and in the manga. Because it just catches up the casuals and the and, and whoever it is that doesn't know much about the series. Okay, that's why I should care about this moment. That's why I should care about the situation and whatnot. So I'm glad they put that for the casual viewer out there. It's very, very um, important. Especially for Rebecca and for, um, for Rebecca and for uh, Shirahoshi because... Uh, for Shira Hoshi, I know that around that time, One Piece was at its highest in terms of volume sales, so maybe not for Shira Hoshi, but for Rebecca. I know a lot of people like got disinterested in Dressrosa, and maybe they like picked it back up like later on down the line. You know, for those casual fans who were like, screw this, or or but even back for for Alabasta. It's still, like I said before, man, Alabasta was was like the arc back in the day, right? It was like the arc, and to know that somebody didn't watch Alabasta and then like watched like a random episode one day of like Fishman Island or Marine Ford or whatever the case may be and they never went back and watched Alabasta is really really weird to me because to me you know whenever you first get into a series you still have like those vibes of like oh this is how the people felt about this series when it first came out yada 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 like to me One Piece is still like the the series that nobody knew about that was like the GOAT series it's like the underground series that we were all huge fans of but it wasn't it was like the it was the GOAT of the big three but no, you never knew anybody that read it. You know what I'm saying? It, like it was, it was that one series, that one really underrated series that was really, really godly, but no one knew about. Like to me, that's that's still the way I think about the series in my head because that's how it was whenever I first got into it. And Alabasta was the arc, and that's just it's it's really weird to me whenever I think of that. But anyways, moving on from that, that that's that's my that's my rant slash thing of the day. That that's why that's why they do recaps. But it was really cool seeing all of them together like this. This panel of Shirahoshi uh, showing up in front of Rebecca and VV, really really cool stuff. Seeing Karu. And whatnot. Uh, VV having a very cute panel right here. They're in the New World now, so they must have gone through Fishman Island to get here. And then right here, the So Are We. Like, yeah! We're, 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 we're indebted to Luffy Slava, yo. It's like, shout out to credit cards. And then we have Sai. Shout out to Sai and Leo, man. They're brothers. Sai, Sai's not even supposed to be out here. You know what I'm saying? But he's here, yo. He's here. He's chilling. He's in there. After this mission, I'm going to cut all ties with my country. Looking forward to seeing where that leads to and whatnot. That, that should be a lot of fun. But here we get into a particular... Oh, wait, hold on. I, mean, I got to talk about Fukuboshi and Viola. Bro, listen, man. Fukuboshi was spitting game. 
My boy was flexing. He was like, woo! I can't blame him, though, man. Viola, man. I mean, listen, bro. In terms of, of just straight, you know, you look at someone at first sight, and you're like, by the heavens, yo, Viola's probably like the top, like the creme de la creme when it comes to that, man. I mean, I, on just on a personal standpoint, I find Viola more attractive than Boa. Like, and I know Boa is, is known as, like, the, the, the goat of One Piece, and it's like, she's, she, she's gorgeous, and whatever the case may be. And she is. You know, definitely Boa Hancock is, uh, I, I mean, I grew to love her character more than her looks, actually, later on the line. But uh, re regard, regardless of what the case may be, when it comes to Viola, though, man, like, just just straight off of, like, first, like, you're looking at her, like, on some Sanji stuff, and, you like, you have the hearts coming out your eyes. Listen, man, Viola, whoo! <laughs> my all of that like i understand he's a good man he's a good man you know what i'm saying so i can't blame him i can't blame him but it was really cool seeing igurum and whatnot i'm, pr I'm pretty sure that pell is with cobra all right uh, that's a safe assumption because we didn't see pell in this chapter so it's a safe assumption that uh, pell is with is with viola um going right here to the next page oh right here man just seeing wapple and vivi interacting just gave me so much nostalgia so much nostalgia this is this was all built up from the cover from the cover story i can't tell you what chapter it was off the top of my head but it was off of a cover story whenever we got to see wapple again after after quite some time you know showing that he was the king of the evil black drum kingdom so we knew this was coming but to actually see him here this malicious bastard in this from the flesh man uh was 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 really crazy um, you know, just seeing seeing Wapple again, just period, was really nostalgic. But having him interact with Vivi was was really really cool. And then of course having Dalton and Kureha coming up in there, man, the king of the soccer kingdom, yo. That's my that's my dude right there, man. Dalton greatness. And just having all these characters here, right? And now uh, Kureha's gag is still you know as strong as ever with the. Oh, are you asking for the secret to my youth? To have a great is it's awesome. And then Vivi, of course, recognizing and saying, Dalton's son, Dr. Korea, I'm happy to see you again. It's really, really cool stuff, man. And Korea saying, you know, if I have known you were a princess, I would have charged you more. Like, just classic Korea. And uh, Dalton, man. And oh, Dalton greatness, yo. And uh, this, this, this right here was one of the funniest parts of the chapter where, you know, freaking Wapole is over here just, he is going in, man. Well, I mean, Wapole is giving everything he's got to to telling uh, Dalton how he feels about it and everything. And Oda puts it to where the di the dialogue box is, or the, the, the speech bubble is right behind Dalton. So, like, this is so insignificant that we should not even care about what it is. But because it's One Piece, I'm sitting here trying to, like, dice what it is. It was like, I will definitely get my revenge. I think that's what it says. I will definitely have my revenge. I think that's what it says. All right. But just the fact that it's behind the speech bubble to me is really funny, man. And then Dalton asking about Luffy. Really cool stuff. And then here we get to the part of the chapter, man. Because up until this point... I, I was absolutely enjoying it, absolutely loving it, man, seeing the interactions. Like I said before, I had been waiting to see the interaction between Rebecca, Vivi, and Shirahoshi. That, to me, is not on the same level, but it's it's on it's on the level of, in terms of, like, the way that it is, of, like, a crocodile and Doflamingo meeting up, where, you know, those characters are very similar in their roles, and having them meet up, like, in somewhere like Marine Ford is really cool, and seeing those interactions happen is really, really awesome. That's the way that, that's the way that I felt about Vivi, Shirahoshi, and Rebecca, and, and the way that the roles came around, and just how they were all impacted by Luffy and the way they talk about the king and it was just really really awesome to me to have all these characters come together and and appreciate the king man and of course having Dalton and Korea and just it was a combination of nostalgia with brand new character interactions that really made this chapter um excel it really made the world feel that much more alive like i was saying uh, before i love 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 the, this portion or th this first part of the chapter but then we get into the part of the chapter that really had me shook man I've said it before, I'll say it again, man. Doflamingo is in my top five favorite characters in the series. Yo, he's my dude, he's my guy, I am a Dofi Tard, man. Shout out to my boy Brago, because I know Brago's a huge Dofi Tard. Shout out to Sawyer's uh, Dofi skits that he does on his things, man. It's just Dofi, uh, in the One Piece community, we love Dofi, Dofi's awesome. And he delivers some of the best speeches in the entire series, going back to Marine Ford, going back to chapter 801, this legendary speech about the throne wars, and, you know, it's going to have these phenomenal speeches over the course of the series and here we get back down to level six undersea prison impel down and this is where i i start because 
the lead up to this chapter, I spent the whole chapter to take place over there up there in the reverie. And like, I thought the last panel in the chapter was going to be all of them walking into the doors of the reverie. Based on the way everything was building up, that's where I thought everything was going. But no. Oda slaps us all in the face and hits us with an undersea prison impel down level six. And from the moment I saw that, I was like, all right, all right. And then on the side, you see the foo, 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 foo. Yo, man, listen, bro. Dofina, I already love Dofina enough, enough as it is. But Dofi is haxed. I mean, my dude is strong in burning blood, bro. And I know there's a Sugo Fest right now, and I'm trying to get Dofi so bad and won't be stretched for But in um in Burning Blood, you give me you give me Dofi the with the D, the DLC Dofi, the one that fought Luffy. Oh man, dude, that dude is haxed, man. Over I mean, it's gold. But anyways, anyways, getting back to the chapter. I just, I want to reread this entire thing verbatim, man. What's up with the solitary confinement? So lonesome. Are you perhaps protecting me, Magellan? Have they arrived? The assassin from up there? Now, based off what I was saying before, I still believe that the assassin is someone sent from Cypherpole. Maybe, if it is, maybe it might not be Zero. Maybe, what about if it's flipping Stussy, bro? Can you imagine that? Imagine the government sending Stussy. To take on Dofi, or to take out, or to free Dofi. You know what's Stussy freeing Dofi? I mean, I know by the time that that all this is said and done, this probably is all a setup for Doflamingo escaping. But what happens after that? What happens after Dofi escapes? You know. But anyways, going back into uh, to who it could be. I mean, an interaction between Lucci and Dofi would be go to me. You know, just staying on the cypher pole side. But man, an interaction between Stussy and Dofi, knowing how both of them have ties to the Celestial Dragon, and the way that Stussy talked to Big Mom, and, and, and the way that her and Dufeld had that one interaction where Dufeld would would uh, talk to her like, um, oh man, if only, like, uh, where she basically implied that, or he basically implied that she's much older than she seems. And, you know, Stussy basically said, you, you, you keep talking like that, man, I'm gonna have to bust a cap. I'm gonna have to bust a cap with that big bow, you know what I'm saying? She did, technically, Dufeld du 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 got rocked. But, yeah, man, I think that'd be pretty cool, having a, an interaction between Stussy and Dofi, and, or Dofi and Lucci, or Dofi and a brand new member, member of, of the Cypher, Cypher Pole, you know, I don't know, man. Wh whatever they decide to do, uh, whatever Oda decides to do, I think it'll be very, very interesting. But I think at the end of the day, it is going to lead into a Dofi escape. But it would be interesting to see if they did it deliberately. Like if the Cyber Bowl agents went down there to assassinate him and then they let him escape. Or something around the lines, something else happens and it fell down and allows him to escape. Well, I don't know, man. We'll see. But here we get into the final page of the chapter. This is the portion of the chapter that has us all shook, that has us all going crazy, man. And as it should, you know, it, it definitely is an insane portion of the chapter. Starting off from here, it says, Did they send an assassin here to shut me up and to prevent me from telling anyone about the secret treasure hidden in the Mighty Jilts? Woo, woo, woo! Isn't it fine to reveal what it is already? Power degrades quickly anyway. It rots away in no time at all. Now, we go down here. Odo specifically tells us one more time that it's the Mighty Joyce. We hear foo foo foo. Then right here we see on the bottom a hand holding two, specifically two bounty posters. I'll get back to that in a second. We get to see someone walking up some stairs, some very spooky stairs, dark stairs. I mean, yo, know, this is this to me is the spookiest panel Oda's ever drawn. You see, there's a top five spookiest panels where I have like chills going up my spine. One of them is the CP9. Whenever Bluno went. Right next to Robin and said CB9. I had hair standing when I first heard that because I first watched that in the anime, and I had hair standing when I first watched that. Man, I mean, I was shook during that whole CB9. That to me was the spookiest moment in One Piece up until that point. That and like that entire CB9 situation in Water Seven. That that to me was like top tier spooky, and it was it was goat, but it was spooky to me, right? This takes the cake, man. This is just spooky, and, and the way that the way this character looks. All right, so this character goes in. Opens the door, door opens, everything, it appears to be frozen. I mean, you see ice, you see the breeze come in, big mass, I mean, it is a massive door. It opens, and then right here, we get to see what appears to be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, uh, from, from what we can see in the panel, seven openings. And then on top of those openings, we get to see little, uh, right here. So let's just say, okay, so the ones, uh, well, first of all, the only one that's lit up is the one where, as we see in the bottom, the straw hat is. So the one on the bottom is where the straw hat is. Now then, that is the only one that's lit up. However, the, what I want to get to is that 
there there looks like to be an insignia on top of these. So like on top of the, the, the lit one, there's an insignia. On top of the one next to it, there's an insignia. And so on and so forth. So I'm looking forward to seeing how that's going to tie in uh, to, every, to all of that. It'll be very, very interesting to see. But going right into this final part right here. I did not notice this until I went into the OPDF. Shout out to the One Piece Defense Force. But they were talking about how this was the big straw hat. The big straw hat. When I went back and reread the chapter, I did notice, like, man, yo, this straw hat is flipping huge. It does look very, very big. It looks like, it, it just just looking at it in terms of, of the way this character is, this character looks like he has a, a robe, or a he or she uh, has a robe, just based off of uh, looking right here in the panel where it has the clack clack. It looks like the robe like is extending all the way back there. And then the character arrives, holding both bounty posters, arrives in front of the straw hat man now why is this thing frozen is there anything under the straw hat your guess is as good as mine your guess is as good as mine if it's big and if it truly is a giant straw hat like a, a really really big straw hat then the previous owner had to have been very very big the previous excuse me the previous owner had to have been very very big but before i get into that i want to go back to First, first of all, let's go back to volume 66. And I want to talk about the first time that Joy Boy was introduced to us. So Robin says, you know, who is Joy Boy? I read the point in Glyph in the Forest of the Sea. Who was he apologizing to? And then, you know, says, I'm a survivor of O'Hara. And King Neptune states, Joy Boy is a person who lived on the surface during the 100-year void. So at least 800 years ago. The message was meant for the mermaid princess on the island at the time. And, it was an, and then it was an apology for breaking a promise made with Fishman Island. The concepts of that promise are not clear, but someone will come along to fill the promise in Joy Boy's stead, at least according to the royal legend. So we believe in that day, and so we believe in that day, and uphold our part of the promise by protecting Noah through the generations. For it is not until the day the promise comes about that that Noah will fulfill its actual purpose. After everything ended above the island, I heard that Noah was taken to the force of the sea by, Nep by Neptunians. If Joy Boy was meant to use Noah, could he have had the power to control Neptunians? Talking about, you know, the remembered princess had the thing, she oh, she can do it, uh, and whatnot. And then uh, two years ago, I read a panel gift on an island in the sky that contained the location of an ancient weapon, and the location was here. And then could the mermaid princess who lived in the time of Joy Boy have had another name? And then, of course, we find out that Shirohoshi is, in fact, Poseidon. Which has me also wondering about uh, the reactions. Like, will they reveal that, that Shirohoshi is Poseidon here in the reverie? That would be insane. Because you see how maybe that's why Oda's been building up and setting up uh, all these characters who are like, yeah, marry, 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 marry my son, marry my son, marry my son. And then they immediately turn on her whenever they find out that, that she is an ancient weapon. Like, can you imagine something? That would be sick, man. I, I would want to punch everybody there in the face immediately after something like that happens. But going back into what I want to talk about with Joy Boy. Initially in the reaction, I said that it could very well be Joy Boy just due to the inherited will uh, thing in the series where you know you, you, uh, things are passed on from generation to generation to generation and it has me thinking like why would they hold something like a straw hat here in cryo like have it frozen here to preserve and not want anyone else to know about it because according to doflamingo this is something with power if people know about this like it's gonna be bad and i'm going to assume it's one it's, it's one of a, a few things number one if someone were to find out about this straw hat or, or like, they don't want this to be knowledge. Uh, number one, they don't want it to be known that 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 uh, anything. They don't want anything to be known about that 100-year period back in the void century. Maybe that's, you know, something very, very simple to where they're trying to hide anything and everything that has to do with a 100-year period from back then. All right? And that straw hat, if, if, if it is all the way from back then, from, from Joy Boy's period, then, of course, they would not want anybody knowing about it. Which also has me thinking, are the other things that are here along with the straw hat, if anything's there, because uh, the straw hat is the only one with a lit up light, if anything else in the other uh, spots, are those also ancient uh, relics of sorts or ancient um, artifacts back from those times? Regardless, that'll be very interesting to see if, if, if anything else is there. But... Going back into this straw conversation, so that could be one thing. Number two, they maybe they didn't want the straw hat to be passed down for some reason, for some odd or strange reason. They didn't want this thing to be uh, passed down because you know this series is about inherited will, and with 
with that with that being said, knowing that Roger may have been the first person to have had the straw hat since Joy Boy, just you know, basic assumption of whether it was Joy Boy, somebody in the ancient kingdom, somebody from uh, the 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 this, the the kingdom that, that Clover was about to reveal before he got smoked, uh, maybe somebody from the world government. I don't know, man. Somebody, just somebody had this straw hat. It could be, um, you know, the the most evilest of individuals uh, back from that time, the one who destroyed this kingdom. You know, it could have been the fleet admiral at the time, it, or it could have been the, the the head of the celestial dragons, man. It could have been um, Joy Boy. It could have been someone. I don't know who it is, man. But what I'm going to get to is that. It for, for so many years, that straw hat was kept in the mighty jaw. Then who and how gave that gave that straw hat to Roger? Because it looks like the exact same straw hat. And just, if it is a giant straw hat, somebody made a miniature version of it. Now, I've been saying for a couple of, of months now, uh, because I went back and while rereading uh, Marineford, I, I, was, I was looking back into, uh, you know, that... Or I think it was during Marineford, but regardless of the case, maybe whenever they revealed that Ace's uh, where he got his hat from was in Wano. Yeah, that that, that was in uh, Marineford. I'm mistaken during, during the Or stuff, but where he got his his hat from was from Wano. And they, they got to me to think. I was like, man, could could the individual who made the straw hat be from Wano? You know, if there's an individual there, maybe from the Kazuki clan, who specializes in making these hats. If that is the case, and Oda decided to reveal this straw hat before Wano, so that in Wano, whenever we meet the, this this person who created and you know put together the, the, these hats, uh, comes to light, and we find out who that is, it is going to raise so many questions. If the if the person who created the straw hat is in Wano, the same person who created Ace's hat is also in Wano, and is and, and is also the same person who created in uh, who created who, who um. Who, who gave Roger that hat, then that means they must have seen the original. And if they, and if they saw the original, that means that they've been alive for in Roger's time. Let's just say, you know, he died um, uh, around 20, roughly 22, 24 years ago. So around like 764 years after Joy Boy's time, or after, it, 800, after the Void Century, 764 years. So somebody must have seen this straw hat from back then. And they recreated it and gave it to Roger. Either that or someone from back then was waiting and kept this hat preserved to give it to somebody who they thought would be able to carry Joy Boy's will. And they saw it in Roger and they gave it to him. Or Roger might have stumbled upon the straw hat through fate and through 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 will. Just 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 through a, a random stroke of luck. Came upon the straw hat. But I, what I'm trying to get to is who created that straw hat. Because whoever created the straw hat had to have seen the original. And that is going to be very, very important. I think that's why Oda gave us this particular revelation before Wano. Because I strongly, now now more than ever, I do believe that the person who created the straw hat, the person who made the straw hat, who put together the, the, the straw hat that Luffy wears on his head right now, the one that Roger and Shanks wore, is in Wano. And it could possibly be a part of the Kozuki clan. Which would make a lot of sense because that would connect the Poneglyphs and that would create, that would just connect so many different things uh, right there. Especially if it's like one of the older heads of, of the Kozuki clan. Or maybe somebody who's dead. Uh, I, I don't know, man. All I'm saying is, is that we're going to find out more about the Straw Hat when we get to Wano. I, I, sh I really do believe that. Especially after after seeing this. But this is just a, such an insane revelation to me. Now, so that that just... With, with that in mind. that With that in mind. I had a third point, but I don't even remember what it is now. <laughs> I don't even remember what it is now. Uh, shout out to me not writing stuff down, but I wanted to I wanted to talk about that because that's that's been on my mind for a while, and I do believe that we're gonna get something on those lines in Wano whenever we get there. So let's go ahead and look at Dofi's conversation with with Law in Volume seventy six. So I'm gonna just read this verbatim. Uh, where Law states, there's something that still doesn't add up here. You're a former celestial dragon who fell from the grace of Mighty Jaw. So how do you still wield their power? Just this morning you bubble SCP zero into action. And then Dofi says, you really want to know that just before you die? It's because I know all about a crucial treasure that exists within the sacred mighty Joa, and the very fact of its existence would shake the world to its foundations. So that, that, it gives you chills, bro. Kill the Flamingo, that boy must not, be, that must not be allowed to live! To them, I was the worst kind of fugitive. One with an ace up his sleeve. Once the Lister Dragons realized they couldn't kill me, they grew quite cooperative. If only, I'd, if only I had the power of the opi-opi fruit in my grasp on that specific day years ago, 
I would have been able to make use of Mighty Joe's treasure to seize true world power. That is how valuable and useful those powers are. Not only for the personality switching surgery, but one even greater ability. Do you know what that is? In the hands of a skilled enough user, the OPOP fruit has the ability to fulfill mankind's longest and oldest dream. Many call it the ultimate devil fruit for this reason. The ultimate ability of these powers is to give the eternal gift is, is to give the give is to give the gift of eternal life the immortality operation, but in performing it, the surgeon loses their own life. Now, why would he connect this to the straw hat? Why would he connect this to the straw hat? Now, this seems a bit sci-fi-ish, and this seems something that I don't know if it would happen in the world of One Piece, but at this point, it could very well happen, man. I've been seeing some theories about people saying that they could have somebody's body in cryosleep. They could have somebody's body here with that hat in cryo sleep, and that's why this thing is so cold. Whether that whether that happens, I'm not sure. Like I said, that seems like a bit of a stretch, but right now, nothing seems like a stretch. After this chapter, nothing's a stretch to me. Seriously, man. I don't know. Now, we remember and we go back to the living legend that Oda... That, oh, I believe Oda said it on the lines of... A living legend that lied dormant within the One Piece world. A living legend that lied dormant within the One Piece world. So, if we take that literally, a living legend that lied dormant within the One Piece world, as in a living legend that was actually asleep, that was actually sleep, slump, in some sort of cryosleep, and gets woken up. I don't know. That would be that 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 would be something. That'd be madness, and maybe the reason why this person is still here is because of that immortality operation done by the OPOP fruit. And they were kept in cryo sleep for all these years after that. I don't know, man. I don't have the answers, but what I can say is that there's a lot of theories out there, and there's some very very interesting ones. Very very interesting ones. I mean, two that I haven't even covered right here. You know, just basing everything on the strat. Two that I haven't even covered is who this individual is. And why they have these two papers. Now I can assume this individual right here is someone who either looks up to 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 whoever the owner of this straw hat was, or someone who's very close to the original owner of the straw, which means they have to be from a long time ago. Just as my assumption, eight hundred years ago. Whoever it is, I'm not sure. But they're holding two posters, Luffy's, and someone else's in the back. Obvious thing that comes to mind is Rogers, Shanks, or Blackbeard's. But what about if it's neither of the three? What about if it's somebody else's? We don't know how long the bounties have been in place. What about if it goes even further beyond that? What about if it's the person who created the hat in the first place? Just food for thought. Food for thought. It would make sense if it's Roger, because Roger and Luffy both are the ones that wore the hat, but Shanks wore the hat too. And then he passed it on to Luffy. So why wouldn't he have three? It could be Roger. It could be Jenks. It could be Blackbeard. But what about if it is the person who created the straw hat? Who knows? I don't know. But it's interesting. This is a very, very interesting chapter, man. This final page by itself is one of the most interesting ways that I've ever seen. Uh, it, it is, for me... It is one of Oda's greatest cliffhangers. Uh, it's really hard for me to put it as the greatest or, or like the one that shocked me the most because there's been so many insane cliffhangers in, in the One Piece series. Uh, I look back to chapter 512 whenever I saw Zoro go up the way by Kuma. Whenever chapter 573 ended with, with uh, freaking Akainu putting his, his fist through Ace's uh, chest. I just, you know, so many shocking cliffhangers that just i mean 597 even though if i was even though it wasn't a shocking cliffhanger 597 was one of those cliffhangers that where you're like man yo when the one piece comes back in five weeks you know the leaving the straw hat on there coming back in 598 for the time skip you know there's been so many amazing cliffhangers uh in one piece but this is definitely one of the ones in recent memory that i can tell you right now just you can't stop thinking about it at least for me i can't stop thinking about it man because it's just there's just so many things and each panel has it has different implications each panel in this in this final thing has different implications from doflamingo's speech to the holy land itself to him holding or the him or her holding this the, the, the two posters why only two 
Is it a, a pre- is this person somebody because the thing is with this individual is this is this somebody who um who is who is against the world government uh, it, or not against but like um is this somebody who because that's the thing I just I don't know I don't know because we don't know who, what the original owner of the straw had wanted to achieve and this all connects back to Roger and Rayleigh saying that whenever you find out the true secret about the One Piece world which has me shook because this is one of the massive secrets this is the national from from what from what we know from what Dofi's saying this is a national treasure that no one knows about it it's, it's hidden in cryo sleep. That only certain people can get into. Cryo. And if people know that this thing exists, it's going to shake up the whole world. What about if this thing belonged to a giant? If this thing is huge, what about if it belonged to a giant? I mean, we, 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 know, we know that, that Jaguar D. Saul was a giant. But what about, it, what about if, if there was a giant before him? What if Joy Boy was a giant? I don't know. Whenever we get to El Bachman, there's going to be some, there's gonna be some questions. Now that this straw hat is big, there could have been a, there could have been a giant. There could have been a giant that had this straw hat, man. That, that's them. But regardless, I don't know, man. I just, I do not know. I don't have the answers, man. But it's very, very interesting and awesome to speculate, yo. Know? This is the thing that makes the weekly One Piece experience so incredible. This is the thing that I live for. This is the thing that I can't wait to just find out more about. And I know that Oda's not going to give us anything about this for quite some time i don't expect him to i don't ex i don't expect us to learn more about this for a long time i definitely do expect to get more void century information from the whole king cobra uh, uh, scenario and, and topic of discussion uh going on with 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 what is going to to take place in the in the reverie and what the question is going to ask but as far as this hat goes i don't think we're going to have anything i don't think we're going to switch back to this hat or anything regarding this hat until we get to wano until we, until we get to the kozuki clan and luffy himself gets to learn something either luffy or robin gets to learn something about the hat man i'm i'm, I'm just gonna that's my prediction i believe this is the last you're gonna see about this for quite some time for quite some time but i'm interested in finding out more so, i mean not more so than that the hat I, of course i can't wait to find out who it is and why it's here and like so many different questions and who the other poster is but I'm very, very interested in finding out who this individual is and whether we'll see this person again and not know that it's this that, that it's the person who was here. You know, because Oda could build it up like that to where somebody comes on there and they 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 show up like in a random chapter or like a random thing and we don't know that it's this person right here because it looks like they could even have a crown on. They take off the crown and we won't know it's them. And like they go around, they have random, you know, good old interactions with everybody. And they just one random chapter, they put on the crown and they pull out the two bounty posters with the freaking straw hat. You know how I found me? I'm like, yo, you were the person from that one chapter? So Oda can definitely do something like that, man. He definitely can, but this is one of those chapters where I just, I couldn't stop thinking about, man, just so many different things and things that you could discuss and theorize just from this one page alone. Uh, very very interesting stuff well once again with with the straw hat and with who this character could be the two bounty posters the fact that there's seven other uh, openings right here and the the one with the straw hat is the one that's lit up the fact that everything in here is in cryo and it's very very cold very you kept it at a very low temperature and it's in the fact that it's all over here up at the mighty joa and the fact that dofi states that people would be willing to kill him people were willing to kill him for knowing that this thing existed i mean that by itself is insane to me like what kind of power does this thing hold yo why do they fear this so much is this why they killed this is this why they called roger the pirate king because because he wore this hat or, or like, i don't know man i don't know and then you look back at the Gorosei too, because, you know, as of late, for a long time, I looked at the Gorosei as like these all evil beings, or not evil, but like, all, I want to protect the, 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 the secret from back then, and at all costs, I'll kill anybody for it. But it really did feel like they were feeling regretful over having to fill Clover, but they knew they had to do it. They knew something that had to be done, like, they were like, we have no choice, kill him. That type of, that type of thing, you know? Like, I wonder what the Elder Stars know. I wonder what the Goros say now. I just, I want to know more. The re This Reverie arc is so amazing, man. I'll see y'all next time. I hope you guys enjoyed this. I just wanted to come on here and ramble and just talk about this, this week's One Piece chapter. Um, if you enjoy this, if you manage to stay this long, 
God bless you. Thank you very much, man. I really do appreciate you staying this long. If you stayed this long, man, let me know. Let me know in the comments if you stayed this long. And if you would like to see more of these afterthoughts videos slash discussions after One Piece chapter, let me know. I would love to do these, man, because I do, I, I think a lot about these chapters, especially at nighttime, like right here at nighttime, like late night. I think a lot about these chapters and, um, and I definitely would like to have more, especially for a chapter like this, uh, more thoughts and um, yeah, more videos uh, talking about, you know, the chapter itself, theories that I've heard, theories, my own theories and that type of stuff. So just thank you all so much for stopping by, man. This was awesome just coming on here and just being able to, after reading a chapter, talk about it and discuss it with you guys. But thank you all so much, man. Hope you all have an awesome, awesome day. Let me know everything and anything that you guys think down below for this week's chapter of One Piece. I will see you guys for next week's chapter. Well, actually, no, before next week's chapter... I think I'll have another One Piece video out by then. Maybe not for this particular chapter, but for um, just in general. I think I'll have another One Piece video out by then before next week's chapter. But regardless, guys, have an awesome sauce of a day. I will see you all next time. Looking forward to reading the Viz translation of this chapter. Um, it's definitely going to be an interesting read, especially whenever we get to Doflamingo's speech. It'll be nice, man. But I will see you all next time. Have an awesome day. One Piece greatness.